From Buck Beak to Buck Rogers, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that's correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us today, we have Lily Do. Hi, I'm nervous to be here. <laughs> Aw. We have Amy Dallin. Uh, same, but yeah. you all seem really nice, and I assume you are as well. Good, okay. good. I'm glad we're, <laughs> I'm glad we're projecting a, a, yeah, an aura of comfort. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, returning, we have Emma Five. Yes, I am also here. Not nervous. That, <laughs> that would be weird if I was, because I've done this show several times. Yes, uh, Emma, you've played before, so I you have. know. Um, uh, Lily and Amy, you're new to the game, um, but it's very simple. Uh, these are a stack of incorrect statements about the things that you know and love. At least that one. At least one of you knows and loves. <laughs> Um, it's up to you to find the thing that's wrong, uh, buzz in, and correct me. All your corrections must be preceded with the phrase, um, actually. If you don't do that, I won't give you the point, and I'll feel very bad about it. Yeah. So please don't do that to me. And you can interrupt me whenever you want. How's everyone feeling? Still a little nervous, maybe? Still, you know? No, I've gone from nervous to incredibly confident. Great. <laughs> um, well, then we'll, we'll jump right into it. Buzzers right. in hand, and we'll ask our first question here, which is about Marvel Comics. Marvel Comics' first company-wide crossover series was Secret Wars. In it, the cosmic being Beyonder teleports heroes and villains to Earth-1, or Earth-Prime, to combat one another. Characters like Wolverine, Captain Marvel, Ultron, and Molecule Man fight each other with, yes? They go to Battle World. They go to Battle World! They actually, oh, they, um, actually. Oh, they go to Battle World. Yeah. <laughs> I did emphasize it. Uh, I gave her the gentlest yeah. nudge. Say it before Emma does say yeah. it. Actually. Really, uh, Lily would be very supportive. She's like, no, oh, hey, hey. He's cutthroat. <laughs> yeah, hey. Well, okay. It's not. Well, now, that was the shakes. We're going to have yeah, the you know stealing of an answer that was literally just said. Yeah. Hurts. Hey, <laughs> it happens. Games have been won by it. I guess I'm gonna give it to Emma, but I, uh, I'm okay with it because you're friends, and I feel like your friendship yeah. can survive. Yeah, this. our friendship will. I think. I think we'll come through. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. uh, you're correct. The world is Battle World. It's not. Uh, didn't even finish the question. One. Not Earth Prime. Uh, a, a world that does what it says. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, perfectly. I, lean. Listen, I really like how straightforward it is. Battle World. Yeah. You know, you know exactly what you're signing up for when yeah. you go to Battle World. Yeah. Like sometimes you go to a place and you're like, this name does not convey what it's going to be like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Greenland. Greenland. Yeah, yeah. Greenland. Yeah. Greenland. Classic, Iceland. not Battle World Iceland. scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Greenland was originally called Battle World, <laughs> and then <laughs> the Vikings were there. <laughs> I feel like we can't rule that out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that point will go to Emma. Um, Don't feel good about that. How the game is played. Oh, no. Next question is about Dungeons and Dragons. In Dungeons and Dragons, the demon princes of the abyss are some of the most formidable foes in the universe. Fraz Urblu is the prince of deception and illusions, who appears as a massive gargoyle. Grogar is the prince of cruelty, who appears as a demonic goat wearing a bell and rules the realm of Tambalon. And Grazd is the dark prince of pleasure, who appears as a beautiful but demonic humanoid and takes advantage of others through manipulation and charm. Lily. Um, actually, Fraz Gorglu is too stupid of a name. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Fraz Erblu. Thank you very much. That one too. And that is just stupid enough. Uh, it, uh, that is that is a real name okay. of the Dark Prince of the Abyss. Um, actually, uh, Fraz Erblu. Yeah. That was his name. That was right? his name. Is he the one that's a gargoyle? Uh, that's right. He's not a gargoyle. He is a gargoyle. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like I like the way you were saying that because it, it's it's almost reminding me of, like someone at a party be like. Oh, Fraz Erblu, right? Was, <laughs> yes. Is that the name, Fraz Erblu? Are, are you in med school? We have met several times oh, before. I'm sorry, Fraz. <laughs> um, actually, the realm isn't Tambalon. Grogar is in Tambalon, yeah. yeah. Grogar. I'll go ahead and call it. Right. Since it seems like <laughs> oh, so I hear so many nouns yeah. that I honestly lost track of the question. Yeah, the answer we're looking for here is uh, Grogar is actually the villain of the original My Little Pony series. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is true that Grogar that it was an evil goat sorcerer from Tambalon who wanted to conquer Ponyland. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's he like he wouldn't look out of place as being like a prince of hell. Sure. He's sort of this like um, sort of like I think it's like a kind of goat centaur so there kind of is thing. Is no demon prince of cruelty is what you're saying. We made up. We also would have given the point if anyone said Grogar is not the prince of cruelty because we straight up made that up. Are you sure? My Little Pony didn't take Grogar from Dungeons and Dragons. I guess I Somebody's can't. home <laughs> they 
don't it's exist in the same world. That's, yeah. what, that's what My Little Pony is. It's just somebody's homebrew candy. <laughs> <camping. laughs> yeah. Well, no points for that one. This next one is about Sailor Moon. Luna and Artemis are cats who advise the Sailor Senshi. In the manga, they even go so far as to temporarily transform into humans to directly help in a crisis. However, in the anime, only Luna ever transforms, which happens when she wishes to become a human because she is in love with a human man. Um, actually, they're not originally cats. They were hum- Or I'm thinking of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. A lot of magic cats out there. I've actually seen this show. <laughs> and I know I'm wrong as I answer the question. Um, actually, they used to be humanoid, but they came in cat form? Uh, incorrect. Um, actually, the transformation doesn't happen because Luna is in love with a human man. Uh, it does. It does. It, does. it definitely it does. does. Close yeah. to it. Um, actually, they're, they, like, they just look like cats. They're not cats, really. They're like moon aliens. That's correct, cool. yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're not cats. They're yeah. aliens from the yeah. planet now. Yeah. They're not cats. Yeah. <laughs> they just happen to look exactly like cats. Like yeah. cats. Yeah. In the same way that, you know, uh, uh, Superman just have Kryptonians just yeah. look, ha happen to look a lot like humans, yeah. but they are aliens. Uh, yeah, they're. Yeah. Mao is cat in Chinese. Maybe yeah. it's cat in Japanese too. I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. Well, uh, we will move on to our next question, which is a fan question. So oh. one of uh, one of our fans sent this in to us, uh, and this was sent to us by Rue Magic. And it's about Ender's Game. The government gives John Paul and Teresa Wigan rare permission to have a third child, violating Earth's strict two-child-per-family policy. They named the boy Ender, and the government hopes he'll combine the best traits of his brilliant older siblings, Valentine and Peter. Yes. Um, actually, I feel like Ender's a nickname. It is a nickname. That's right. Yeah. Um, do, you, do, you know, do you know his real name? I'll give you the point anyway, but... I do not remember. I don't know the real name. I can't remember. I don't know. His real name is Andrew, and he's just called, uh, called Ender. Um, but yeah, that's a point uh, for Amy. Uh, See, that was a good clean point. Yeah. Like, I feel like all yeah. the points I get are dirty. Like, <laughs> I'm just, I mostly someone guess. Someone else forgets to say I'm yeah, actually. Yeah, someone else forgets to say I'm actually. I mostly guess Stupid. my way into right yeah. answers. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, this will bring us to our first shiny question of the game. Shiny questions are like shiny Pokemon in that they're worth the same amount of points. They're just a little bit different and a little bit rarer. So we are going to play a game here called In the Beginning. On the other side of this board, there's going to be eight different superheroes and eight descriptions of origin stories. Uh, it'll be up to you to match the Fuck. correct origin story with the oh correct God. superhero. Whoever gets the most right will get the point. So you just have to do better than the other people on this couch in order to <laughs> claim this point. Go ahead and flip those over. So, uh, Lily, why don't you uh, walk me through um, walk you through your answers here? The max I said engineered by an alien robot scientist on another planet. Uh -huh. Spawn. Uh, this one I didn't know where to put it, so I don't think this is right. Homeless victim of a hit and run. Uh, d doesn't feel humanoid enough to be hit and run, but that's okay. <laughs> one Punch Man looks dumb as hell. So I said he did 100 push-ups. It felt like the only obvious answer, uh, but I could be so wrong. Rocket. <laughs> Have seen the movies, completely forgot. Created by a cabal of evil scientists. Mm -hmm. uh, Raven, not from X-Men, sold their soul to a demon to return to life. Adam Warlock, great last name, uh, allows themselves to be possessed by a demon. I feel like I've heard that backstory, and it does not go with him, but who knows? <laughs> Devil Man, the offspring of a powerful demonic lord. Big Barda, a great name, great outfit, born to a powerful alien race. All right. Um, we'll we'll kind of run through these and then I'll sort of reveal how, how many. Okay, are any of these correct? Uh, some of them are, yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, Amy. Okay, some some certainty, some guessing, and some last minute switches. <laughs> uh, I don't remember the Max's deal at all, so I'm hoping he's a homeless victim of a hit and run who okay. accidentally just got. You're hoping he's a homeless victim of a hit and run. Jesus Christ! Why would you wish There's that on someone? I just look. I mean, he looks like he'll make the best of it. Uh, Devil Man also haven't seen. Really hoping he allows himself to be possessed by a demon to gain its power and keeps the demon at bay with a pure heart. All right. One Punch Man does seem like he would do 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, and 10k running every single day. Uh, Spawn definitely comes back, uh, like, definitely was betrayed, definitely comes back to collect souls. I'm not totally sure about the mechanics of him actually selling his soul, but I know he wants to see his wife again, so I'm going with sold his soul to a demon to return to life after being murdered by a friend. Okay. 
Raven, pretty sure the offspring of a powerful demonic overlord. Adam Warlock, pretty sure created by a couple of evil scientists before rebelling against them. Rocket, pretty sure engineered by alien robot scientists on another planet. And almost certain Big Barda, born to a powerful alien race and groomed to be a villain before deciding to be here. Very cool. Um, uh, Emma, yeah. how, uh, well, well, let's say this. Amy, you got all of those correct. Oh, uh, uh, so, Emma, how? Uh, I did not get all of them correct. All right, but boy, oh boy, I got Saitama correct. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> and I think I got Akira correct, too. Devil Man allows himself to be possessed by a demon to gain their power by keeping their, their pure... Heart that is correct. Um, how many of these other ones are the um, same as Amy's? I got Spawn sold their soul to a demon to return to life after being murdered by a friend. Uh -huh. And I think that's where it stops. Okay. I got three. Uh, Not so bad. What? And Rocket, you made those origins sound real close together. Oh, we that have, was sneaky. We were definitely trying to be sneaky here. Yeah. We were trying to, to trip I people up for sure. I switched those around. Uh, that was my last minute. Oh wait. There's yeah. there's it's also a lot of like them. Devil Man spawn. Yeah. There's a lot of like hell thing yeah. going on well, here. Max no. was right. a homeless victim of a hit and run. The Max was a homeless victim of a hit and run, uh, as, just as Amy hoped. Uh, <laughs> uh, her, so her dreams I'm came sorry, true. As you wish to befall him. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that was. All of them correct for Amy, uh, three for Emma, two for Lily. So that uh, means our point will go to Amy. Yeah. Hey, we just keep on making mistakes. We did something wrong in a previous episode, and you caught them. Here are some of our favorite corrections from you. At Hawkswift95 says, in the Name That Elf shiny question, the art of Sylvanas is after reanimation by Arthas. So she would be a banshee in that picture, not a high elf. I will give you one point for that. At Raraspada4 says, In the board game Ticket to Ride, you don't actually build any railroads. The game is instead about traveling the most along the North American railways. And from our exclusive dropout Discord, Rapongi3k says, Um, actually, you imply that the Namahagi is a Christmas creature or some holiday equivalent, but it's actually a New Year's creature. Rapongi, I imply no such thing. This was a holiday episode which also includes New Year's, and we have New Year's glasses on the set to prove it. Amy, how many of these were you confident in when you were when you were going in? I've read some Spawn. I was pretty confident on the three Marvels and the DC, and uh, the rest was guessing. Sure. <laughs> One Punch Man, you know. I think everyone was, everyone was, 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 was on board with like, yeah, that. If was there's a, if like, there's a dude who just I was got really powers, happy to give me a give me, yeah. yeah. To see Saitama, you know, represented <laughs> on the board of heroes. Yeah. Granted, his origin story pretty easy to guess. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, yeah even we like, all do that every day. We could be we a hero. Also, yeah, yeah. We have no hair. Who has the time though? That yeah. is actually a plot line. Is like because it's yeah. like his, his power is privilege that he has the time to actually. Yeah. His superhero workout literally did make him like lose his hair though. Like. In the beginning, he has hair, and he's just a like weak dude. And then he's like, mm, "I'm gonna become a hero," and so he starts doing so you this need regimen. room for all that muscle. Yeah. Exactly. Well, our next question here is about Harry Potter. Reporters for wizarding news publications like The Quibbler, The New York Ghost, and The Daily Prophet. Yeah. Um. Actually, is there a paper called The New York Ghost? Seems <laughs> awfully stupid, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It? But it is but real. I, you know, yeah. those new, great. those new. Uh, <laughs> Fantastic Beast oh movies my God. are awfully stupid. Yeah. So. has got to stop adding to the canon. <laughs> it gets dumber and dumber. <laughs> I also thought that was fake. Or, yeah. But it's too dumb I to be I was like, fake. oh, that's a great, yeah. you can't yeah. make that's it. The, yeah. New, the New York ghost is the kind of pun that the New York Post would make, uh, making fun uh, of something yeah, else, yeah. 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 Anyway, well. All right, okay, I'm ready to listen That's to all right. <laughs> hey, that's right. Uh, well, after I recover a little bit. Yeah. Okay, God, here it goes. Reporters for wizarding news publications like The Quibbler, The New York Ghost, and The Daily Prophet can be a real nuisance. For instance, a Daily Prophet reporter wrote an article questioning if Arthur Weasley was fit for his job at the Ministry of Magic. Although Arthur wasn't reached for comment, since Molly threatened to sick her kitchen knives on the inquiring journalist. Yes, mm. Lily. Did she offer to sick her garden gnomes on the journalist? Ooh, you're extremely close. You have hurt. <laughs> Um, actually, yes. did she <laughs> offer to sicker? Thank this you. This is a very supportive <laughs> couch. This women is a very, helping yeah. women. <laughs> um, you're very close. Uh, uh, you've identified what's wrong, so I'll give you the point unless someone can tell me uh, what, what the sure. complete correction. So it wasn't that she threatened uh, 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 kitchen knives um, or garden gnomes, but really? it was something else. 
something else? Um, actually, she threatened to sick her troublesome twins, Fred and George. <laughs> <laughs> They're real mischievous. You won't like it one bit. The number of wizard wheezes yes. they have will blow your mind. Um, yeah. Actually, my other son has dragons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I'd, I'd take him over those troublesome twins <laughs> any day. Uh, uh, no, that's incorrect. <laughs> Um, actually, she threatens him with uh, legal action. <laughs> <laughs> the most dreaded thing of all, <laughs> lawyers. Um, Lily, we'll go ahead and give you the point. Uh, Molly threatened to stick her house ghoul on the oh. journalist, mm. who is a, uh, which is kind of glossed over, but what the fuck? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you just casually school? have a house, a house ghoul? ghoul? Uh, in the first book, uh, he has chains. It's sort of like, it's like, what? Wow. what, what is going on? I feel like they omitted him. Uh, the house school from the films completely because I can't yeah. picture it an Oscar yeah. version <laughs> yeah. of this. But I do love the sort of like, look, wizarding has a long history. Sometimes you got ghosts. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a thing that yeah. happens. Sometimes you get roaches, sometimes you get ghouls. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, it feels like it has this sort of like Flintstones kind of thing where yeah. it's like, it's a living. Like, <laughs> like the house ghoul is there just to like, I don't know, like yeah, that's my eat thing. kitchen is, scraps is, or something. Is the house ghoul an undead? Like, was this a person at some point that is now just a reanimated corpse. That's so like, sad. Living. That's so dark. <laughs> yeah. Are house schools sentient? Like, do they, is this, is this, they, like, this yeah. is a human, not a human being, yeah, but Yeah, does this it is... have its own, like, thoughts and wants yeah. and feelings? Is it not leaving because it refuses to leave or because... How cruel are the Weasleys for having a high school <laughs> exactly. is what I'm yeah, really yeah, getting yeah. at. Yeah. What is going on yeah. here? How do you go about employing a house school? Or does one just... Like they don't do. Are work. they tethered to your home? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean. Just, I'd like to imagine that that that, that a house yeah. school would be more like, well, I live here, so you can come if you want, <laughs> but we're gonna work out a deal. Yeah, that's it. Like, you, you have yeah. to like go in and impress the house school. Yeah. It's like, to make all a right, deal. come on in. Yeah. yeah. Co op board. Yep. <laughs> wow, an above ground ghoul. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> Well, yes, a uh, point for Lily. You know, food that's fast doesn't have to be fast food. If even a meal prep kit is just a little too much for you, maybe you should try Freshly. Freshly offers quality meals without all the hard work of prepping, cooking, and cleaning. You know that feeling when you remember that you have some delicious leftovers in your fridge and the only thing standing between you and a meal is just a couple minutes in the microwave? Well, Freshly gives you that feeling all week long with chef-made, nutrient-packed, delicious meals delivered fresh to your door. Ordering is easy. Go to Freshly.com and choose from over 30 delicious, satisfying, better-for-you meals like steak peppercorn, sausage baked penne, or their chicken pesto bowl. And Freshly has plans and meals that work for you, no matter your dietary needs or family size. Right now, our listeners can try Freshly for just $6.16 per meal. Stop searching the internet for healthy food near me and let Freshly deliver the food to you. Your meals are always delivered fresh, not frozen, and are ready to heat and enjoy in just three minutes. And with new meals added each week, Freshly gives you the convenience of chef-made, nutritionist design classics delivered right to your kitchen. Right now, Freshly is offering $40 off your first two orders when you go to Freshly.com slash actually. So stop stressing about dinner. Go to Freshly.com slash actually to get $40 off your first two orders. Freshly.com slash actually to get $40 off your first two orders. Now back to the show! and we'll move on to our next question here. In Slaughterhouse-Five, Kurt Vonnegut introduced the Tralfamadorians, fatalistic green aliens who look like upright toilet plungers with a hand on top and a single eye in its palm. Tralfamadorians perceive reality in four dimensions, meaning they experience all past, present, and future moments. Um, yes. actually, they experience it in all dimensions? Uh, no, is that? That's, no, that's not what we're going for here. Uh, um, four dimensions. Four dimensions, four dimensions, correct. which is, most of the dimensions. Yep. <laughs> in Slaughterhouse Five, Kurt Vonnegut introduced the Tralfamadorians, fatalistic green aliens who look like upright toilet plungers with a hand on top and a single eye in its palm. Tralfamadorians perceive reality in four dimensions, meaning they experience all past, present, and future moments simultaneously, and thus they have seen how the universe is going to end. Um, actually, Tralfamadorians are not green. Uh, they are. Cool. Uh, no. <laughs> Um, actually, Kurt Vonnegut referenced them before he wrote Slaughterhouse Five, so they weren't technically introduced in Slaughterhouse That's Five. That's correct. Oh, yes. Damn. Uh, uh, do you know? Do you know where, where they were introduced? No, but they sound familiar, and I haven't read that one, so I'm working from that knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to give a guess? Uh, Breakfast of Champions. Uh, they are not, although they might appear in Breakfast of Champions. No, no, not I also ever. don't know what order the books were written in. Is it in. the book with Ice Nine in it? Is it the book with Ice Nine in it? Uh, Cat's Cradle. Cat's Cradle, it is not Cat's Cradle. 
That's fine. I'll give you the point anyway. Uh, yeah, good um, job. Uh, they are first introduced in the Sirens of Titan, um, mm. but they are also referenced in uh, Hocus Pocus and Time Quake. Uh, were any of those the ones you were thinking of? The one you were I have no idea. All right, well. <laughs> uh, that's honestly helpful. That's the first time I've ever heard that word pronounced and not just read it. <laughs> say it again. Tralfamadorians? Tralfamadorians. I mean, I could be yeah. saying that wrong, yeah. too. Lord knows I say a lot of things wrong on this show. Yeah. We all do it, and if yeah. you do it wrong because yeah. you read a book first, yeah. I feel like there's it's I feel like there's a word for this yes. that someone told me. I'd be fascinating to know for what that the, is, because it's such a pronounced. universal experience yeah, of like... Yeah. I don't oh, yeah. know if this yeah. was right, but I think it was being misled. Because it was based oh, on like someone misled. saying misled. Oh. Like, if you've been misled. Oh. Um, oh. That's clever, I like that. I like it. Well, that point will go to Amy. The Watchmen comic was originally going to feature a cast of existing DC characters. Night Owl was Blue Beetle, Dr. Manhattan was Captain Atom, Silk Spectre was Huntress. Mm. Yes, um, actually, they're Charlton characters. DC had recently purchased them. Uh, that may or may not count as a thing, but they... That's not what we were planning on. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, did, did DC own the DC rights? DC owned them by the time the comic was but coming out. They hadn't introduced out. them but, until Crisis. That is that is a good point. Though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's I like know. arguing with Amy so, on comic books. Uh, maybe stuff. keep going. Sorry. I, you know what? I mean, they technically DC must have owned them because they wouldn't have been planning right, on yeah. doing it. Okay. Mm. Objection withdrawn. Objection withdrawn. Very good. <laughs> yes. The Watchmen comic was originally going to feature a cast of existing DC characters. Night Owl was Blue Beetle. Dr. Manhattan was Captain Atom. Silk Spectre was Huntress. The comedian was Peacemaker. Rorschach was the question. And yes. Um, actually, Silk Spectre wasn't Huntress. Uh, do you know what she was? I'll give you the point, but... <gasps> Who was... Is it Phantom Lady or...? Uh, no. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll give you the point anyway, unless someone, uh, someone else can tell know. me. I don't know. No, no. Uh, okay, uh, well, you found it. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, found it, and I didn't even finish, so you clearly so it was sorry. wrong. Silk Spectre was Nightshade. I was oh. gonna be Nightshade. They uh, asked Alan Moore to create original characters when, when DC realized the storyline would make the characters unusable in the future, which also sounds like a fake excuse you give someone, yeah. because, like, comics I, are constantly I was doing say, things yeah. that are, like... Comics constantly are just like, well, all that other stuff that happened to this person, it's fine, they're dead, we'll bring them back. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, this feels like the comics version of like, ooh, I'm really busy that night, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. is, My characters are sick. <laughs> yeah, well, you got that point. I don't feel good about it, I'm sorry. No, no, no. This no. feels bad. Feel bad. I, Amy, how dare you, no is, things! <laughs> well, uh, this brings us to our second shiny question. This is a game called, What's Wrong With This Picture? On the other side of the card, you will see uh, an image that we have manipulated in some way to make it incorrect. Whoever can spot the thing that's wrong with it first will get the point. Got it. Okay, and flip it. Uh, Amy. Um, actually, is usually wearing pants instead of this skirt? Uh, no. Uh, well, gosh, I'm trying to think. Are they like skater shorts? Because most Final Fantasy characters are wearing <laughs> super 90s gear. <laughs> you've, yeah. you, you've spotted the area that's wrong. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think if, uh, it, how much to count. It's, you, you've spotted the area, but it's not that he should be wearing shorts specifically. Okay. Um, there's a more correct way okay. to correct this. Um, Everyone stare at that area. Yeah. Yeah. This guy. Yeah. Just <laughs> focus right uh -huh. in on that uh, area. In the crotch. <laughs> Um, Emma. actually, there should be, like, a single pant leg. <laughs> You're pre you know what? I, uh, I, we, we, there's, there's a lot of, I'm gonna count that. Okay. We'll, we'll, I'll show you what it's supposed to look like, okay, and we'll okay. see where the computer okay, comes yeah. from. Let's see this, that's what it yeah, should look like. Yeah. <laughs> the, the skirt should be uneven. It should be, yeah. yeah that is be. a wild yeah. look. It's a wild look, yeah. right? <laughs> They only do wild looks. That is like a, sir, you have to go home from school <laughs> and change. Like, that is not it's appropriate like, for homeroom. Do home your room. fingertips make it to the end of your Absolutely little not. situation? Mm -hmm. That is a box <laughs> up, sir, yeah. you yeah. Yeah. If zip-off hiking pants shorts weren't a cool enough look for you, try just zipping off one of them yeah. and see how that feels. And it's not even the fact that his hoodie is open, just showing his chest under the overall. No, that's yeah. normal. That's yeah. that's it's like, we let Titus dress himself <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Like, the people yeah. who designed this were just like, more is more. Yeah. Yeah. Have you played those games? More is more. Yeah. yeah. Well, great. We'll go ahead and collect these. Uh, these, oh, these beautiful right? Well, I probably made a couple of mistakes there. If you notice something that I fucked up, just tell me about it already. Tweet at um actually show or go to our exclusive Dropout Discord and correct me there. If we like what you have to say, we might feature it in a future episode. And maybe even give you a little point. Very good. Here's our next statement. 
Good Omens, the nice and accurate prophecies of Agnes Nutter, which, by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman, features an angel, Aziraphale, and a demon, Crowley, working together to prevent the end of the world. Among the novel's antagonists are the four horse persons of the apocalypse, war, famine, pestilence, and death, who ride motorcycles instead of horses now. And I... Um, actually, uh, it, Alice Nutter has a different occupation than a witch. Uh, no. Incorrect, Kay. incorrect. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, actually, not all of them ride motorcycles. At least one does. Uh, they all ride motorcycles. Yeah, it's a sort of, it's a, it's a biker gang kind of thing. Um, um, actually, is one of their names incorrect? Uh, that's very broad. <laughs> I'm going to have no, to... What you, you said we could try again. <laughs> you could absolutely guess. But you can't guess, hey, is, um, actually, something's wrong with what you said. I'm like, yes, that's the game here. We gotta, right. gotta get a little more specific. Yeah. Do you want to get a little more specific? The last one of the four <laughs> names. What uh, was it? Death. Death. <laughs> Edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> don't use this. Don't use this. I don't know. Okay, fair enough. Um, you're on the right track. Pestilence is is no longer one of the horse persons of the apocalypse. Ooh. He retired after the invention of penicillin. One of the four horse persons is now pollution instead. Of course. Uh, yeah, he's the that's new, new horse sure. person. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That's a great book. Yeah. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Mm. Just and knowing with death, we how Terry Pratchett writes. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, you got to throw in some of those. They like, also like, could not have known that this changes. vaccine thing was going to happen, so they reasonably true. thought that's yeah. true. Yeah. That pestilence. We might thought be, this was yeah. gone. Like, but guess what? Back. There's yeah. measles in LA. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, this will, we'll bring, go on to our next statement here, uh, which is about Lord of the Rings. There were 20 rings of power crafted in total. The one ring was crafted by Sauron himself. The other 19 were forged by the elf Celebrimbor. Although the rings were all corrupted by Sauron's magic, Celebrimbor had other notable works too. He worked with the dwarven architect Narvi to create the Doors of Durin. Now everyone is going through the poem and counting. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, uh, Narvi was not the architect who created the uh, Doors of Durin. Narvi, Narvi is the architect. He is the yeah. architect. Cool, cool, cool. Um, actually, they were all made by the same person. It's just they didn't know about the one made in secret. Uh, incorrect. Gosh, incorrect. Hmm. Um, actually, not all the rings were corrupted. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> only 16 of the 19 other rings were corrupted. <laughs> the three rings given to the elves... Uh, engagement uh, rings. Were, yeah, the, 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 <laughs> the engagement rings were not corrupted <laughs> because love is pure and true. Uh, uh, no, the, um, uh, the, the three elven rings were not corrupted yeah. by Sauron's magic. Mm. That point will go to Lily. And what, what, can you see all the cool shit that happens when elves and dwarves work together, making cool yeah. doors? Like, you don't always have to be fighting. No. Like, you know, True. work together, make some cool shit. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But like, how much do you think the elves like lauded it over the dwarves that their rings didn't get corrupted? That's oh, True. Just <laughs> constantly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. It still goes on the ring finger. Oh, it's a pretty cool ring. It's like, yeah, yours, uh, yours is all fucking busted and evil now. Yeah. Well, Anyway. That must be really unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. And you're you're notable for your craftsmanship, is that right? Oh, interesting, right. interesting, interesting. All right, interesting. cool, interesting, interesting. interesting. Um, Still got corrupted. <laughs> but then again, the dwarves could throw it back at them like, well, of course, because you elves crafted these rings in the first place. Yeah. Dwarf rings would never have been corrupted. Dwarves mm -hmm. by themselves, mm, that works yeah. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, well, that Great. point goes to Lily, 243. Pretty tight mm -hmm. game. Uh, and this will bring us to our last shiny question. This is a game we're going to play called A Book By Its Cover. We've played it before with uh, with just, you know, uh, books, sci-fi books, yeah. fantasy books. Um, we're doing the same sort of thing where we've taken uh, we've taken the cover, we've removed the title and anything, uh, and like authors, anything that would be too too much of a scripted giveaway. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular edition is going to be comic specific. Um, now we're not looking for like an issue number. We're looking for, uh, for you know, like title of the series. I'll go ahead and flip this over and let's see what we have here. We'll go down the line and we'll I'll, I'll try to keep track of how many. Uh, you just got right. So, uh, Lily. Wow, this guy, that's Superman. Wow, <laughs> knew that, don't know what series. 
this, I could tell there were uh, Asian people and dragons, and I wrote, the ancient one, question mark, a colonial fantasia of Asian characters. And I meant <laughs> caricature. And this, more things you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ran out of time, I wrote comic book. Okay, also technically true. <laughs> this, I said, space juice. <laughs> This one Which I is said. the sequel to Space Jam. <laughs> yeah. This one I said, Are You My Daddy? <laughs> this one I'm pretty sure it's not, but I did see it said Neil Gaiman, so I said Sandman. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, uh, Amy, let's, let's run down what you have. Um, I've got. Uh, is it Action Comics, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Akira, Watchmen, Saga, and Sandman? Well, Amy, I would normally go all the way down here, but once again, you've gotten these all correct. Uh, so hey, I got like four right, though. Okay, so, so Emma, let's, let's, listen. let's take so a look at I got yours. Superman, League okay. of Extraordinary Gentlemen. That was the one that I took a closer look and was like, wait, Saw some invisible. probably <laughs> supposed to be like some Alan Quartermain kind of type people. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Akira, uh, yeah, Space Wizard. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's nicely into the universe of Space Juice. Uh, yeah, Demon Baby Napping uh, and, and Sandman. Uh, cool. Um, so yeah, uh, Emma, you got uh, three correct. Lily, you got one correct. Uh, and Amy, you got these all correct. Uh, That's wild. Um, even, yeah, we, we're trying to throw people a little bit off with the Watchmen one because it's not necessarily a cover that people... It's nostalgia by yeah. Bite. Yeah. yeah. I was like, this is sad, so I was like, I have read some of these and I do not know these covers. Um, yep, here are the answers. Uh, that point will go to Amy. Uh, I had a different cover for Watchmen. Oh, I mean, this these it's are one of the issues. It's one of the issues, yeah. So we yeah, we specifically didn't pick the like the real All iconic right. stuff. <laughs> but, hey, you know what? You suck. <laughs> yes, we suck. Sneaky. Yes, we're very sneaky and we do suck. Uh, I do apologize for that. Um, that's part of the game. It is. Just go out and get hit uh, by a car. <laughs> This will bring us to our last question of the game, okay. um, which, as always, concerns real-life skills. If you're traveling internationally, you'll want to make sure you have some cash in the proper foreign currency. Whether it's Kenyan shillings, Danish kroner, or Yugoslav dinars, you can potentially order currency through a local bank branch if you think ahead. Alternatively, your yes. Um, actually, dinars are not Yugoslavian. They are, yeah. yeah. Alternatively, your bank may have branches abroad or a partnership with a bank at your destination, in which case you can use the ATM there to get cash as well. The most expensive option is to use airport kiosk um, exchanges. Actually, you should be able to just use your ATM card at like any NCR produced <laughs> ATM machine overseas. Um, that's not what we're going for. Um, right. uh, well, uh, <laughs> uh, we, we, we do say you can use the ATM to get cash, but yes. uh, but that's you know. No, okay. Person. The most expensive option is to use airport kiosk exchanges, which tend to charge high fees and give bad exchange rates. Um, actually, airport kiosks are not the most expensive <laughs> because it's even more expensive if you want to exchange your currency. In a theme park. <laughs> <laughs> in a theme park. The first thing I do when I get to a country is I get to the local theme park. Yeah. You find a Disney, <laughs> yeah. and then there, and then I exchange. Please inside. change my dollars to Disney bucks and then change it into, into euro. Uh, um, uh, that is not the answer we're going for. <laughs> Um, actually, it's much more expensive to just literally throw money away. <laughs> <laughs> also true. Okay. Wouldn't help you use the, the local currency. Yeah. I'll go ahead and call it. Man. I'll say that the the first guess was was a little close, but the issue is not that, that, um, that dinars are not the currency of Yugoslavia. The issue is that Yugoslavia has not been a country since oh 1992. My oh, my God. <laughs> that uh, is nothing. <laughs> 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 Uh, uh, I know uh, the former Yugoslavia. <laughs> um, which, uh, of course, again, is extremely mean and tricky of us. Um, but and that's that is not a practical life skill. <laughs> well, no, it would be. You wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to try to book a book a flight to Yugoslavia. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're all upset. Everyone's uh, melting into the couch. <laughs> uh, our final score is two, five, Man. three, making Amy our winner Yay. for this episode. Yay. Um, but thank you to all three of you for playing this. This was very fun. Uh, and thank you for watching. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually. Yeah.